Welcome back. All right. We're headed to Seattle. Let's get on with it. Your plane hits the SeaTac tar uh, tarmac with a jolt. Welcome to Seattle. The chilly northwest rain obscures your vision, and you step onto the tarmac. Before long, you're sitting in the cramped back seat of a cab, following the sim signal from Sam's locator chip into the heart of the Redmond Barrens. Organ grinders, a legal chop shop for body parts, whether from the living or from the dead. If you're hurting bad enough for Nguyen, this is a place to sell a limb or an organ. It's also a good place to dispose of an inconvenient body while making a little cash on the side. This franchise is the closest thing the Barons has to a morgue, and it seems that this is where Sam Watt's body ended up. You open the door, and you're assaulted with the smell of death and bleach. Nasty. Uh, let's... No, I don't want to load back. We're good. I am good to go. Um, boop. All right, cool. Here I be. New objective. Ask the coroner about Sam. All right, let's go. In the back, says the intercom. All right, cool. Let's head on back. The smell of death and decomposition wash over you, only slightly masked by the minty, fake, fresh, industrial-grade desiccant. Oh, nasty place. All right, let's go talk to Dresden. Hovering over the recently departed is a small dwarf, whistling a tune. His broad grin says, I love my job, a little more than you'd want or expect from someone with a ch in the chop shop trade. As you approach, he looks up with a lopsided grin. There's something kindly in his eyes, although it might just be a stray reflection of chrome and surgical tools. Sorry, I didn't expect any visitors at this hour. And some asshole at corporate took my receptionist. What can I do for you, sir? Are you the coroner? I'm John Dresden of the, the Organ Grinders branch manager here. So yeah, that makes me this franchise's area's coroner too. And you are? <sighs> My name is Mac Midnight. I'm here to represent a man named Sam Watts. I'm here to look into his murder. He frowns. Interesting. A dead man makes for a strange client. But what makes you think he's here? Sam had a locator chip embedded in his skull and I followed it here. I see. Well, you're right. He's here. Not too many people know about the murder yet though. The press haven't caught wind of it yet. What with it being way out in the barrens? Who told you he was dead? Sam's digital ghost. When his heart stopped, I got sent a recorded message asking me to bring the killer to justice. Guess he had a hunch. I'm not talking about the money with this guy. The dwarf raises his eyebrows, a smile wiping suspicion from his face. A dead man's switch, huh? Fascinating. I was working on him earlier. He's over there. So I can just go in there? It's not a big deal. It's not security protocols or shit. Alright, cool. Let's just go on over there. He's my second Emerald City Ripper, Ripper Venom. The third one was downtown. Ripper, huh? Sounds grisly. Not my title. It's what the Seattle press insists on calling the killer. All I know is, like the original Jack, our Ripper knows how to handle a scalpel. This one's even more twisted. She, he or she always removes an internal organ from the victim. What prize did the Ripper take from Sam? Watt's liver was cleanly cut out. What about the other lucky contestants? The first victim's heart was missing. The third had a spleen removed. Nasty. Dude. Dresden, get out here! Um, I'm just gonna stay in here. I'm here about the Ripper Vic, Sam Watts. Kit? Hell yeah. Hey, Sam. What's up? Sam's body is half covered by sterile surgical sheet. His face is ashen white, for the first time without a smirk on it. Below the chest, there's a small pencil-thin incision covered in dried blood. Beyond that, the corpse is immaculate. It would seem the killer knew exactly what they wanted from him and took it. Next to Sam are several plastic envelopes containing evidence found on his body. You can examine evidence through the bag without spoiling it. I'm going to look at the business card. Moving things around, you can make out that it's a card from a place called the Seamstresses Union. There's something handwritten on the back, but blood makes it illegible. Let's look at the cred stick. It's a standard, cheap, unsecured cred stick. No way of knowing what's on it without slotting it. I'ma take that. Sam would want me to. Get a drink. Alright, uh, slot the cred stick into your PDA. 300 Nguyen is added to your account. I'm gonna look at the purple shirt. 
It's Sam's shirt. Several of the buttons are missing, and the blood is thro thoroughly soaked through it. The bag sloshes a bit in your hand. Nasty. All right. Handwritten note. You can only see part of the note, given that the torn off bits and bloodstains. Sam, I feel terrible that we argued. We have been blank so long. Sam, sorry. See you there. Love, Jessica. Well, he was. He had someone who cared about him. She's not here cleaning up his mess, so... All right, let's go meet the policeman. I can only assume that he's a corporation policeman. The cheap suit gives it away. Towering over the diminutive coroner is a homicide detective here, right out of central casting. If you ignore the tusks and pointed ears and Neanderthal brow, you can smell his cheap aftershave from a mile away. So this is the new Ripper Vic, Watts. His name's familiar. Didn't his mother kill herself a while back? The coroner frowns. So you insisted at the time. Come on, she offed herself. Had it on very good authority. Now let's go, Dresden. Give me something to work with. This Ripper case is my ticket to a lieutenant's badge. I've already posted everything I know. The killer stuns the target with a combination of drugs and magic and then removes a single internal organ while they're still alive. The perpetrator is most likely right-handed with a slim hand and knows his way around a scalpel. It's a decent understanding of human and metahuman anatomy, too. So, I'm looking for a whacked-out surgeon? Not necessarily. I don't know any surgeons who use, still use scalpels anymore. This day, it's all done with computer-controlled lasers. Could be any, anyone from a military field surgeon to an antique medicine aficionado. You're no damn help, dwarf. The Lone Star Detective, yep, he was for a corp, finally notices you. You note super, his superhuman powers of observation. <laughs> Who the hell are you? None of your business, Lumpy. Um, I'm new in town. You the welcoming committee? If you're new in town, then let me be the first to tell you that I run the show. If you get in my way, you'll end up back here on a slab. He looks back at the dwarf. Dresden! Get me more. I'm putting someone in a cell or in a box this week and claiming my promotion. That guy's an asshole. Dresden, that guy is an asshole. Do you always make friends that easily? I'm great at dinner parties, too. He cocks his head to one side. Be straight with me. Are you gonna really going to work for the dead man? <sighs> yeah. Sam's there when I needed him. I'm going to return the favor. Fascinating again. Detective McCluskey isn't interested in anything but Detective McCluskey. He can fix his own mother if it meant ten million a week added to his paycheck. Plus, he's on the take. Dresden pauses, considering. You have honor after a fashion. I try to honor the dead in my work, so we have that in common, except I don't cut them apart. What can I do to help you? On the take, who's holding his leash? I don't know. Someone with a major pull has been looking for McCluskey's out for McCluskey's career. And wallet. What was that McCluskey said about Sam's mother? The official report she committed suicide about a year ago. Aren't you the official in that sentence? My name is on the report, but my actual findings left some doubts. I can't say it wasn't suicide, but there were some unusual bruises on her upper arms, and she didn't use her dominant hand to pull the trigger. I was told to drop it, so I dropped it. What are organs worth these days? A whole healthy body can be worth a bunch of Nguyen, but individual organs... Not as much anymore, with all the synth and cyber stuff on the market these days. The organ grinders only deals in recently deceased. There's plenty of other chop shops that aren't as picky, though, if you don't care where bodies come from either. Who still uses scalpels? Doctors learn how to use them in their first year of medical school, as do coroners, but neither profession uses them much anymore. It's possible some of the slimier chop shops still use scalpels, I suppose, but I wouldn't know where to look. Alright, have you ever heard of the Seamstresses Union? It's a nearby club in the Barrens. It attracts lowlifes. You probably like it. Me? I'm not the going out type. Always too much to be done around here. Plus the dead are a lot easier to get along with. You know, you're a pretty nice guy for a guy who hangs out with dead people all the time. I just need to know one more thing. Where was Sam killed? Dresden looks up at you intently for a moment while you're speaking. You know, I might be able to do you one better. Why don't you poke around those body lockers in the back and see if you find anything useful? Ah, oh, sweet. Thanks, man. Uh, I'll go do that. I'm not gonna laugh at free stuff. Let's go. Let's go get some. Yeah, med kit. Dock wagon basic trauma kit. Oh, that's cool. All right. So, uh, do, 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 do. what's this thing? 
Oh, restores a teammate's life. All right, cool. So like a phoenix down, so to speak. All right, what else we got? Cold storage locker is labeled John Doe, but the internal thermostat is set to 21 degrees Celsius. Open it. Cold storage drawer opens to reveal a fully clothed body of a man, his arms folded across his chest. In addition to supporting some of the brightest orange hair you've ever seen, the body seems to be in very good condition. <laughs> He's alive? Okay. Whoa, easy there. In one quick move, he jumps down from the drawer and stands before you. Someone who just woke up from a morgue locker, he seems pretty unfazed and pretty well put together. You spot a data track drilled into his temples and sh some shamanistic tattoos peeking above his collar. An interesting combination. Um, for those of you that don't know, in Shadowrun, uh, magic and technology are not mutually exclusive, but they do conflict with each other. So the fact that this guy has a data jack and some shamanistic tattoos means he's playing some games because um, every tech upgrade you take lowers your capacity for uh, connection to magic. So, there you go. The more you know. I told you, John, to wake me up at 6 in the morning. Is it 6? It doesn't feel like 6 yet. Didn't expect you to be so alive. Yeah, Dresden thinks he's funny. You're not the first person he's pulled that one on. He chuckles. Well, so much for a good night's sleep. On the plus side, I notice you haven't killed me yet, so that's good. If you aren't after me, then what's your story? Um, the latest Ripper victim, did you know? Eh, glad somebody cares. We used to drink together every now and then over at the Union. Decent enough guy. Always in trouble over something, though. I believe it. Jake yells toward the side of the room. John, is this guy cool? Yeah, he's on the level. Working for Sam, believe it or not. Some sort of dead man switch. Thought you could help him out. Maybe even stop moping around the shop all day. Thanks for volunteering me. He pauses. Might be sizing you up, but it's hard to tell behind those kick-ass shades. All right, then. Name's Jake. And you are? Call me Mac Midnight. Nice to meet you. Sounds like you're taking a dive into the deep here. John's right. I might be able to help you out. I was with Sam the other night, night of the murder. Poor guy, he was hanging out at the streams seamstresses union that night, tripped out and rowdy. I'd been laying low there for a few days after a bad run, and Miss Q... Kubota? Kubota asked me to throw Sam out, so I did. But out in the alley, some gangers got the jump on me. He winces. Damn. Maybe I need a cup of some soy calf after. After all. John, could you grab me a cup? Get your own damn cup. My hands are dirty anyway. What's wrong with this intestine? You hear a loud squelching noise as Dresden continues his work. Uh, maybe I don't like him as much. Thanks, John. You're a real pal. Anyway, there's a fat corp bounty on my head. Like I said, my last job didn't exactly go according to plan. Out in the alley, a few Halloweeners, all oh, those guys are awesome, got the jump on us. Damn gangers thought they could turn a quick profit off my head. Jake smiles. You get the impression that it didn't work out so well for the gangers. Hell yeah. Stam stumbled off during the fight, although that's... An and that's the last I saw of him, until he turned up dead here, dead on arrival. Reminds me of my last day in this place. You've done this before? It's a long story. I end up at the morgue more often than the average guy. I believe it. Yeah, Jake here's a regular. Should have started a rewards card, Jake. A few more visits and you get a free night's day. I'll hold you to that, John. Anyway, they found Sam's body less than a block away from the Union, missing liver and all. I'll tell you what, you look like you can handle yourself in a fight. I could use some backup to settle my score with those Halloweeners out there. Their leader's got a whole gang searching the Barons for me. I need to be rid of that asshole. That sounds like fun. In return, I'll take you to the place Sam was murdered. It's not safe to hit these streets alone at night, trust me. Jake eyes you up and down. And maybe I'll throw in some decent supplies while we're at it. Listen, my leather jacket is cool. I don't care what you say. What do you say? Hmm. I like to do a bit of street justice every now and then. Count me in, Jake. Great. I've been hiding out there, out here, ever since that run-in with those Halloweeners. Whiny bunch of gangers. But this stretch of the Barrens is their turf. Hell, I'm surprised you even made it into this morgue in one piece without packing some heat. I got some heat. See these guns? Flex, flex. Very funny, Jake. You can sleep in a dumpster tomorrow. <laughs> You're an ass, Dresden. So you need a weapon? Yeah, I am qualified to carry a pistol. Fachetti Security 16. Oh, not an Ares Predator? Oh, well. That's not good enough. Or that's too good for me. All right. Cool. Ready for an evening out on the town? I am all ready. I'll follow your lead. The Halloweeners aren't looking for you yet. 
sweet deal. All right, let's book it. So I'm gonna check my inventory quick here. Yeah, there's me. Dreads and all. I should get a melee weapon if I can. Especially since I pumped all those points into it. But range combat seems pretty damn good. Um, I might just abandon close combat altogether and keep stick with the ranged. This guy, decent at throwing weapons. Probably grenades and stuff. Good at that. Spell casting. All right. All right, cool. Let's see here then. Head out into the barrens? Hell yeah, we will. Alright, that's it for now. Uh, check in for some more Shadowrun Returns at a later date at a different time. <laughs> Thanks for watching.